<laughs> What's a Final Fantasy success movie? <laughs> <laughs> a little louder. <laughs> Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albano Run Beer Review live here at Montebello's. We're not in White's Tavern, we're in Montebello's. The Honey Monster's here. We're not with live Corina. either. You don't have to tell them that guy there. We're live. We're live. We're taped live. Taped live. Live. live studio yeah. audience. There is a live studio audience here. Yeah, me. And him. Shut and up. And him. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, well, we're having a beer that's fairly new to the market. It came out just a few months ago. This brewery is extremely new. Um, sent their stuff to the LCBO. This is from the Double Trouble Brewing Company, which is in Toronto. This is the Hops and Robbers, which is a great name. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'll, I'm already giving it a point just for the name. 5.7% alcohol. So, strong beer. Uh, there's right up here that I'm not going to talk about. It says it's an extra delicious IPA. <laughs> wow. Now, here's my thing, though, right? This is a fairly new brewery. Yeah. Do they have the money to buy the really delicious hops? Because those hops are fairly expensive. Well, the thing we were talking about before, though, right? Them getting maybe a third-party help. Well, it would, would like maybe take some of that cost away. So maybe they can? Maybe they are able to do that? I mean, I know that they apparently do not have a bottling line yet. I didn't know they had a canning line. There is an address on here, which I'm not going to talk about what that is, but that's not the address of the actual brewery. So that's kind of weird. I don't know if it's contract brewed there or if it's just canned there. Um, well, probably just canned there. Probably. But it could be contract brewed too. They could uh, be brewing it there. I mean, such as Michael Duggan does all of his stuff at the Cool Brewing Company. Right. And okay. um, the Hawaiian style IPA is done at the Cool Brewing Company. Uh -huh. That's actually public knowledge, so I don't mind talking about that. Okay. But um, this, I don't think it's public knowledge. Anyone that will want to look it up, can look it up and find it out, because yeah, yeah. that address, I know it. <laughs> well, so, it's it's sort yeah. of for public viewing, seeing so it's on a can. Well, yeah. Here. But Anyway, so let's try the Hops and Robbers. Liking the name. Liking I'm liking the, the name. The I can. actually like the can, yeah. Yeah, good can art. Actually, it looks pretty nice, too. Yeah, yeah, it pours well. Uh, definitely can smell the hops already. Mmm, that's a, but now they're gone. Okay, oh, so <laughs> looks nice. It's actually a, a darker. It's it's like an amber. The beginning of the amber spectrum. Yeah. The very beginning, just starting to go from the golden color to the reddish color. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. It should be nice head. Well, yeah, I guess it's not good. See, the thing is. I'm not, I don't get that IPA smell though, you know, I'm not getting the actual, like, strong hop smell, I'm getting a very light hop smell. It's because it's a delicious IPA. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> like well, that. I mean, they are a new company, so I don't know if they would go full out, screw with your taste buds IPA, or go more slightly mainstream IPA, more of an acceptable IPA. So that's lazy though, I think if you're going to, like, start something, you know, you want to go out there and you want to have something with character at the start so that people at least know your name. You know, because you don't want to get stuck with doing some bullshit thing that, uh, like, a macro brewery is going to, you know, go, yeah, basically tastes like that, but why am I going to pay a fucking extra two dollars for it, right? You got you to gotta get there. You got to have character in your beer. If you don't have character in your beer, it's going to be shit. I mean, you get a nice malt scent to it. You get some grapefruit scent to it. Okay. You get a little bit of a woody, piney scent. Nothing really else. Um, it smells fairly mellow, but, I mean, it all matters when they added the, the, added the hops to the boil. That's if true. they added the hops for aroma or if they added the hops for taste. We'll find out in a second. Yeah. Let's go. See, you can taste the hops more than you can smell. Yeah. Yeah. It's again not over the top. No. But um I mean I could see this working. I could see this being back. I could see this being a beer that a lot of bars would pick up. Because I could see this mm -hmm. being a beer that craft beer enthusiasts would like and macro beer guys would like. Actually, yeah, yeah. It, it falls in that perfect range of maybe like an intro IPA, right? Yep. It's another intro IPA. Um, but we have been talking about, you know, IPAs and cans lasting longer and keeping that flavor. 
So it might be a good thing that's in a can because that keeping that flavor for a long time might be a really good idea, right? That nice keeping sweet that maltiness light. up at the forefront, very soft, yeah. very easy drinking. I'd say light to medium mouthfeel, so the high light, the low medium. Mm -hmm. um, hops, you're getting earthy tones that you get in a lot of a lot of pilsners and German and English styles. Yeah. You're also getting a little tiny bit of citrus, being grapefruit citrus, mm -hmm. and you're getting a like the hop emanation that's still in my mouth right now is like a piney one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not strong. It's not strong at all. Um, yeah, it's all very subtle. Yeah, it's all very subtle. It's all it's pretty delicious. Um, you know, if you're not a huge hop fan, but you do like an IPA style drink, I don't know why you drink an IPA if you didn't like hops. But if you did like the IPA sort of thing, if you didn't like a lot of hops, this would be a great place to start, especially if we're getting introduced, right? Because you don't want to get hit with some abomination of massive hop. It's just it's so nice in the way that it's. It's just gentle on your taste buds. I mean, you're getting all yeah. the flavors, but it's just subtle. Um, again, new brewery, the only beer they make so far, and it's it's a good beer. It could it could be sold to a lot of places. But do they now? Do they actually do sell it in kegs and stuff? Or yeah, they, they, stuff it, it started as kegs. Oh, okay. So it was on that makes sense. Of places in okay. Toronto. That's why I know that they're being canned somewhere else because they were just kegging line at first. Okay. See, that, um, that makes me less upset because this this beer doesn't necessarily have very much character to it, but as a like craft beer that you're gonna put out in kegs, that's fine because you want to hit the macro crowd as well, right? You don't want to yeah, just this, hit the craft. This is a beer that's gonna. This is I a beer that I truthfully think could get into a lot of bars, even <laughs> bars yeah. like bars that we frequent. I've gone to Kaz's quite a lot. Kaz's only really carries macro stuff. Just this is something so. that could actually fit yeah right. yeah it could taste yeah it, it would actually like be a better uh be a better fit but again more flavor but still acceptable to most people yeah people are um, going to be turned off by the bitterness that comes i'm going to give it a two rank oh, rating yeah. because i mean as an ipa and i know i'm not an ipa fan but mm. i know what an ipa is supposed to taste like yeah and what characteristics it's supposed to have as an ipa i'd probably give it like a five five i mean it hits all the characteristics it's just down there on the on this on the totem pole. As a beer though, as a beer, I'd give this an 8.5. I could session this. 5-7% alcohol yeah, five and seven, yeah. easy drinking with flavor. Yeah, yeah. Well, going with your two ranking, as an IPA, I'm like, I'm not going to go that high. I Like, as an IPA, it's got, doesn't really have as much flavor. Um, so I probably, yeah, 5. Um, but as like, as the first, as like the first beer that they've made, um, it is obviously going out in keg form, so they want to sell it pubs and stuff, which means they're not just trying to hit the craft beer market. Great idea. Plus, it's an excellent can. Fantastic marketing can right there. That is a beautiful can. And just by that, you're going to get probably people buying it, um, just because of the can. And because it's not got that really strong IPA taste, I think a lot of people will actually do it. I think this is a great job by them. It's a fantastic looking art, fantastic can, great beer. I'll give it an 8.75. I think very sessionable, great drinking. Um, from a marketing standpoint, you, they were spot on. I think they've hit everything that they need to hit. So that's why I think probably one of the best uh, marketed beers I've seen in a while. Alrighty, well thank you guys. It's been uh, Hops and Robbers from Double Trouble. Get a can of this if you can. It's it's not bad whatsoever. Or get it on tap, because it is on tap. So you know that. Support them more, it. get it on tap. Then people yeah. will buy more of their beer and they can actually start getting other things. That's how, that's how um, Spearhead got moving. So thank you guys. Support local breweries. Yeah, bye.